and welcome to Colleen's Network. Hi. Hello. Hi. My name is Colleen. I am super excited to be here. This is my first time speaking ever, so please laugh at all of my jokes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey learning to code with no time and no money. I studied electrical engineering in college, and I graduated and I got an amazing job at the hottest tech company of the time. I lived in Chicago, a great city with my best friend. I was also engaged to a fiance who happened to be in the military, but I didn't think too much about that because, you know, we weren't married yet. So I thought life would kind of be like this, but in reality, life is more like this. You live where you're told to live, and the service member is gone a lot. But I quit my job in Chicago, packed up, and I moved to the military base in Norfolk, Virginia. I got the only job I could find there in Norfolk, Virginia, which was working for a very large defense contractor. And it was not a good fit. We did a lot of we let what we liked to call paperwork engineering, and that's a lot of Excel and a lot of bureaucracy. I had become an engineer because I wanted to create things, and I was not creating anything. I was pretty unhappy in my job, but I didn't have a lot of options. So I got another job, hoping that would solve the problem that was also in defense contracting, and spoiler alert, still hated it. So I stuck it out because I didn't know what else I could do. But I did Google jobs I can do remotely. And I kept coming across all of these coding success stories. Have you ever seen this headline? Ooh. Or maybe this one? Or this one? Of course I could learn how to write Objective-C, publish an app to the App Store, and make a million dollars. How hard could it be? So I kind of came up with a vague game plan, which is just what I said. Step one, <laughs> learn Objective-C. So I started learning iOS in 2011. It was a very slow process because like many of you, I had a full-time job at the time. I was also pregnant and growing a human is really hard, so I was super tired. Um, so I slowly, I slowly made progress um, over, that, over the course of the year with continual work. And eventually, I published an app to the App Store. And then I sat back and waited for my money to roll in. <laughs> I'm sure you can see where this is going. I made $63. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, but it gets better. What they don't tell you is to be part of the developer program, you have to pay $100 <laughs> annually. So it was actually negative $37. <laughs> and I also couldn't find any freelancing work. This is back when what is now Upwork was Elance, and people were putting things up there like $200 for an iOS app, like maybe $200 an hour, but um, the amount of work that goes into an iOS app is definitely worth more than $200. So I hadn't really found any freelancing work, and I had been working at this for a year. Um, I was kind of burnt out, right? And I was kind of demoralized. I was like, this, I put so much time and effort into this, and I'm not making any progress. I really felt like I wasn't any closer to my goal than I had been. So I'd like to tell you that I pressed on, but that's not what happened. I went back to my cubicle. I had had a baby, so I had a newborn, and my husband deployed. And a deployment, for those of you not familiar, um, is when the military service member leaves for four to eight months and goes somewhere in the world that's dangerous, that we as spouses, we don't even know where they are. Uh, it's really hard for the person who stays home. I had thought about giving the coding gig another shot. It was always in the back of my mind, but like I'm sure for many of you as well, like life happens, right? Um, I had more children, there were more deployments, and just stuff. Um, when my second son was born, I decided to stay home. And um, I always had that dream, though, of working remotely. 
And then I start, almost started again in 2014, but a very close friend of ours died in an accident. And um, you know, that just kind of like stops your whole life. So there was no energy at that time to learn a new skill. So fast forward to 2016. So remember, I started this journey in 2011, so it's been five years. Um, and I was ready to go back to work. And so I figured I had one more shot to really make this work, or I was back to my cubicle. So this time, I approached it with a little more thought and practicality. I started with, what did I want to do? I, this wasn't a financial decision for me because I was actually making really good money at my last job. This was a passion decision. So I had to figure out what I wanted to do. And then I had to have flexible and remote work because the military, we're up for new orders every two years. So there's a lot of moves on our horizon. And of course, I did want to make money. So um, <laughs> finding a well-paying job was important. Swift had just come out at this time, or around this time. So I figured I was going to be starting over either way. I was either going to start new with Swift or start with web. I selected web because I figured everyone needs a website. Maybe not everyone needs an iOS app. So I Googled how to become a web developer. Has anyone Googled how to become a web developer? Wow. <laughs> there are so many choices. It is totally overwhelming as a newbie. How do you pick front end, back end, full stack, WordPress, Squarespace? And then you have to narrow it down to a language and a framework. So the first thing I did is I actually took Skill Crush's um, intro to web developer boot, or it wasn't a boot camp, it was just like a prep course. And uh, that did a good job of kind of showing me what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. And what I learned from that was I did not want to be a front end developer. I wanted to be a Ruby on Rails developer. But while I'm taking this class, I saw a blog post on how to make money while learning to code. And the blog post was all about being a WordPress developer. So it would have been an awesome career path for someone who wanted to be a WordPress developer. But I didn't. But I got like sucked into the hype. And so I started charging people like $50 and $100 to customize the CSS on their WordPress sites, um, which was a total waste of time for me because didn't want to do it, didn't enjoy doing it. I didn't actually make that much money because if you're charging someone 100 bucks to customize CSS, you're not thinking about the time you spend talking to them, figuring out what they want, you know, all that. Um, so it just wasn't advancing me in the direction I wanted to go. So my first lesson would be, Pick something that aligns with your long-term career goals. I think for many of us, this change is a passion project, right? Like you're getting into coding because you're excited about it and you love it. So decide within that huge um, aperture, what do you love about it? Because there's a lot of different ways to specialize. And then, then you have to figure out a language and a framework. That I know is overwhelming. I feel like that's a question I get asked a lot is like, which one should I pick? Especially those of you in the JavaScript community. Um, so I would say pick one and just get really, really good at it. Because once you're really, really good at something, it's easier to transition into other frameworks and libraries. And stay focused. Even if, if you decide to be a Rails developer, but even like Saran is like, no, no JS is the future. Focus on what you've decided. <laughs> Focus on what you've selected, on what you've selected, um, and then you can, like I said, then it's a lot easier to switch. So here I was. I had taken my intro class, and I had decided, as I said, that I wanted to be a Rails developer. So then I took a couple classes on Coursera. This is back when Coursera was free. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I did my free 30 days on Treehouse, but then that ran out. So I did my free prep on Flatiron, but then I was done with that. I did a couple Thinkster courses. And right around the time I was learning what a for loop was for the fifth time, <laughs> I realized, ha, ah, I'm not making any progress. I would finish my free trial period, and then I'd just jump to a new learning platform. I had made apps. But I was, it was like the to-do app over and over and over, right? So I wasn't growing. I was just bouncing around with no direction. And then somehow I was introduced to Michael Hartle's book. And I stopped jumping around when I found this book, and I read the whole entire book. And I think this book worked for me because, one, that's my learning style. I like books. 
Um, and it goes very, it's very, very in much in depth. And that's kind of what I needed was one really challenging um, in-depth resource. And so that leads me to lesson two. Just don't be distracted by shiny learning platforms. When you're learning to code, Google knows you're learning to code. And their ad sensors are popping up all these ads for all of these different learning platforms. And a lot of them are really, really good learning platforms. I don't want to detract from that. But doing three videos in each platform or waiting till your free trial runs out is really not an effective way to get depth in a language. So I would suggest picking one and sticking with it. So I knew to be successful in this field, I needed to meet new people in the field. Um, I had tried meetup.com back in 2008 when I first moved to Virginia, and I had met a bunch of weirdos. So I was a little, <laughs> I was a little hesitant to jump back on the meetup.com bandwagon, but I heard that was um, the way to meet people. So I saw there was a Ruby on Rails meetup, and um, I saw, that I, you know, internet stalked the meetup leader, obviously. And uh, I saw that he worked for Custom Inc., a company that creates t-shirts. And very interestingly, it was the same company my husband had used to raise money for our, um, the widow um, of our friend who died. And my husband had actually had a great experience with this company when we were going through a really hard time. So that kind of felt fortuitous. So I went to the meetup very nervously. And there was exactly one other Ruby developer there. One. Um, but, uh, oh, and I had no idea what he was talking about. So, but he was super supportive, super knowledgeable, and he told me about this thing called Twitter. <laughs> Obviously, I had heard of Twitter. I don't live in a cave. But I had never, <laughs> I had never used it. And um, I actually had to Google, how does Twitter work? And this video popped up. It was like Twitter for grandmas. And <laughs> I watched it. It was very informative. Um, so I got on Twitter. And I had three followers. And one of them is that Twitter bot that has to follow you. <laughs> but whatever. Um, and so I stumbled upon the 100 days of code hashtag. And so I started tweeting. And I didn't follow the 100 days of code rule. I just tweeted when I coded and tried to make it a habit. And then I found Code Newbie. And then I found Moms Can Code. And then I found Vets Can Code. And I found all these amazing communities that kept me disciplined and motivated and lifted me up when I was down and celebrated my accomplishments with me. And that has been such a game changer for this journey. So here I was, I was on Twitter, I was attending meetups, and I had made a few apps. Obviously, I knew everything about Ruby ever. Um, so I started to look for a job. And I noticed in job listings, they um, wanted someone with experience. But it's, of course, that chicken and the egg problem, right? Like, you can't get a job without experience, but you can't get experience without a job. So what to do? Um, this has kind of been a theme of this conference, which I didn't know, writing this talk. But... I got involved in open source. Open source was the gateway for me to get involved in big projects with real people making a real impact. It is hard and scary, I know. I read blog posts about how to get involved in open source beforehand. Um, and some of the repos actually have like these good first time contributor labels. I was fortunate in that I found Operation Code, an organization trying to get veterans into software careers. And um, the community surrounding that is super supportive. So I picked an issue I knew how to do. It was like CRUD operations on an endpoint. It's like, awesome. I did a great job. They were so impressed, like crushing life, right? <laughs> and then I went on to my second issue. And I had no idea what I was doing. And I worked on it in a vacuum for a long time. And I'm going to be honest, like it had been like five or six years by this point. I was kind of ready to quit again. I had been on this journey so long, and I felt like I'd come so far, but I still wasn't good enough. Um, but I did something different this time. I asked for help. This was the first time I had asked for help. And guess what? People helped me. Shocker. And this began some of these amazing mentorship relationships I still have today. So this leads me to lesson three. Get involved in a big project and develop real relationships. Going to meetups is hard. 
I get it. Although you're all here, so it's got to be easier than coming to a conference. Um, <laughs> And these are your people, right? You want to be a developer. These are your people. You have to grow your network. I have to hire a babysitter so I can go to meetups. And it's still worth it. Get involved in open source. You've been hearing it all weekend. For me, that's really what um, really propelled me forward in my career. That was my game changer. Um, once I was an active contributor to open source doing hard-ish things, that gave me the confidence to start applying for remote freelance work. And then I got one client and then another, and then another. So let's revisit. Here's the headline from the first slide. This was not my reality. I really hope it's your reality. But if not, this is more what my headline might look at, might look like. You know, I think I wrote my bio in the pamphlet like six to eight months ago, and I think at the time I was just working with that one client I mentioned. Since I have written that, I have had many, many clients, and I actually turned someone down just last week. So the work is out there. You just have to get the skills to be able to do it. Um, it took me a long time, and I'm still very much a work in progress, but I am finally on the path to having the career I want, and it feels awesome. <laughs>